This is Vicki Ross, and today I'm going to work on another Pulver Paul sculpture. And I have a 14 inch ring. This is made by Durys. I've collected some jewelry wire, 14, 16, and 18 gauge, and a styrofoam base. And I'm not going to talk through all the way through this video because they get too long. But what I'm going to do is embed this round ring in the styrofoam and then glue it. And it will be further held in place with an application of power pole. So here we go. Well, we learned a lesson there, didn't we? Okay, Eileen's tacky glue it is. Alrighty, here is my form. I did one side of the body up through the spine, over the shoulder, down the arm and the hand. And then I did the very same thing on the other side. Foot, hip, spine, shoulder, arm. So I had two identical pieces except for the way her foot is positioned. And then I took another piece of wire folded it and I started it down below her pelvis and brought it up and then around her head and back down and then I used that extra piece to wrap around the spine so that's the extra piece from the head wrapped around I had to add a little piece there and I have double and triple checked my measurements because I want to be a little more accurate this time than I was with my first sculpture. And that leg is a little bit high, which can always be adjusted, but let's do it now. Alright, I grabbed a piece of foil out of the trash left over from my last project. No reason. Whoops. Well, that's alright. Um, now I'm going to start working on the head. So I'm going to put some foil in there. I'm going to wrap just a little bit of tape around this to hold the foil in place. And you guessed it. Maybe you didn't. Paper clay. 
I've sculpted small heads with polymer before. See? And I think we're done with Miss Pearl for now. So we're going to move her out of the way. She performed a great service. I like this 16 gauge wire, by the way. I'm working with my damp fingers. Okay, I've used a blow dryer. I'm making her chin. I'm using what's called an additive method where you add clay where you want it to be instead of a subtractive method where you carve away what you don't want.
All right, what I have been doing is finalizing the pose on the arms. I'm still using my Pearl Buck, Pearl S Buck. Is that what it is? Pearl A Buck? I don't know. I've talked about it before. A little bit of foil. Now, I learned my lesson on my last sculpture to be very careful how thick you make these because you've got to allow room for the clay. And um, I've already got her head a little bit too big, but that'll be all right. Live and learn, right? So, as until I put the clay on these arms, they are still a little bit movable. Um, but I think I've got her about where I want her. So we're going to start with the clay. Once the clay goes on, there's no more moving. Okay? Um, so I'm going to start that process. Had forgotten to turn my lights on. Okay. I've been keeping my clay under wraps. I've had the ceiling fan on. It's off today. Um, and I wrap it back up and put it under its plastic, plastic bag. And then I have plenty of water here to um, work with. And I have, I've been having better luck with small pieces. I worked with real clay for about six months, one year. And while I really enjoyed it, I didn't like the weight of having to leave it at the instructor's house or the, the, oh, what do you call it? The guy who owned the kiln, kiln, you had to wait for this big huge stone oven to fill up with other artists work and then go back in a week or two well I'm, I need a little more interaction with my art than that so while I enjoyed it loved making stuff for Raku Okay, so you see what I'm doing. I'm just getting it down there tight, crimping the foil if I need to. And because we're doing an additive method, I can always go back in and add muscle tone. And another note that when I started this, I had her all bent in the position that she was eventually going to end up in. Don't waste your time because I ended up coming back when I let these various stages dry, like her head when I was working on that, and wrapped her arms around a wire so she could hang and dry. So uh, her arms have bent been bent six ways from Sunday. It's kind of a fine line between getting it damp to work and stick together and getting it too wet. And when you get it too wet you'll know it because it almost liquefies, kind of turns into a real thick gravy consistency. And when you get it there you know you got to let it dry out a little bit and then go back. Before it sets up, you can use 
a wet finger to smooth it a little bit. Smooth your seams. I'm having an issue with, this is a weak spot in, um, in the sculpture. So I finally, I worked the legs with foil and tape just like everything that I've done so far. I didn't think y'all wanted to see the entire thing. And um, I find that if I let this clay um, cure set up a little bit, it was outside for an hour or so, that I can keep going with it a little bit. But what was causing that crack was that this leg was flopping around. So I hooked it down and I left the knee and that foot open um, so that I could give this a chance to cure good. And the waist is also because of all the movement I was doing down around the leg. So that's easily fixable and this will all be covered in Parver Paul anyway. So um, it will be fine. And I will go back in and fine tune the face just because I, I truly love working on sculpted faces and painted faces. And I uh, just wanted you to come in and see, see where I am with it. And I will be back as soon as I get all this paper clay stage done. Okie dokie, I have just been enjoying the process and then I realized that I have a Pauper Paul deadline Tuesday. But I am not going to ruin this project by getting in a hurry. And y'all could sit there and video land and be thankful that you can't smell me. Because I had lunch at an Indian restaurant with our used to be Indian neighbors. And it sure is fun to go to a, an ethnic restaurant with somebody who actually knows what you should order. I had a wonderful chicken marsala. I have decided on this foot to go ahead and anchor it down because it was causing alignment problems. I'm not going to fix the waist until I get everything down here resolved. Put a small piece of tape to hold the foot to that leg. That's what you call artistry in action. You remain open to whatever presents itself. And if I could teach you guys one thing, it's that no plan ever works like you think it's going to. And with practice, you learn to embrace those moments and just keep right on going. I want to get this as smooth as I possibly can. Not for any reason other than that's the way I like it. And that's the way I roll. And you don't have to be that way. It can be rough and chunky and you can wrap her up with Power Paul fabric and if you like that look, it's totally up to you. But on this one, I it's been a long time since I've played with sculpture and I enjoy it so much that that's what I decided I wanted to do. I'm getting a real good practice with the uh, creative paper clay and I like the fact that it doesn't have to be heated in an oven smooths with water and it sticks to itself really well And I hate to tell you guys, I've had this one pound bag in my stash for probably three years. Wasn't saving it for a rainy day, I just, I just do that. Collect stuff in my stash knowing that 
I'll get to it. I'll get to it. So I'm just covering the rest of the armature. Alrighty. Here is the finished, except for the cracks. I'm going to sand on her a little bit with this uh, super fine sand it tool and see what happens. Yesterday I spent an hour or two um, working with wet smoothing and adding some muscle shapes. There are three different tools. Each has, well that one doesn't. The two lighter ones, all right, let's start. This is the coarse one. It's got kind of a hexagonal shape, and it's dark colored, and they're double-ended. The next one in coarseness, which you can see, and it's a little different lighter gray. This one's more of a brownish gray. Oh, they're the same on that end. Well, how about that? You can you can physically see and you can feel the difference in the texture. I'm gonna have to read up and find out why it's a different color, but I'm using the finest one. I think I'm gonna switch to the middle one. She may not make it to the Pauper Paul today. In fact, I don't think she is. I see too many little hairline cracks. Of course, this is all going to be covered with Pauper Paul, so the cracks aren't an issue cosmetically. The bigger issue for me would be any parts that I want to be exposed. Alrighty, she has cured over the last week. I mixed up some slurry, that is some paper clay just mixed in water until it's like thick cream. And last night I took that and brushed it over the whole thing to give me some smoother areas. 
added a piece of masking tape across that weak spot on her waist. And now what I'm doing is using my sand it tools and doing some dry sanding to get some smoother edges. I know that I am using this, trying to make this material behave in a way it wasn't designed for, but welcome to my world, that's what I do. And I'm going to experiment a little bit later with brushing on the Pover Paul on her skin parts that would be exposed and uh, see if I can get that to work the way I want it. I think they make another product that is for that purpose, but again, it's a whole lot more fun to experiment on your own. Anyway, these are the sanding sticks from Sandits, and they are wonderful for this kind of purpose. Little tiny spots, you can just get in there and sand away. They come in three different weights or grits. Okay, I've got her all sanded down and ready to I'm gonna experiment again. Y'all know how I am. Put that over there so I can get under. I'm going to paint a coat of the Pover Paul on top of this cured carving. I don't know if that's legal or not. And I know they have a product for this use to make a smooth sculpture. But I don't have any of that. So I'm going to paint it. This is Creative Paper Clay. Okay. I'm going to show you what I've done here. I have finished my clay model, my cat. I sanded the paper clay really well, got her as smooth as I could, and then I painted her with the bronze Pover Paul. And the next thing I'm going to do after she gets two coats, she's got two coats from the waist down, is I'm going to dress her in a fabric soaked Pover Paul because I want it to look like she's wearing yoga pants. Okie dokie. I've got my transparent Pover Paul, and this is my base. Y'all hadn't seen that in a while. It's not perfectly square, but that's okay. Alright, I'm going to dip this gauze, and this is the gauze I bought at Hobby Lobby. I'm going to try to just get one hand icky. Keep wadding it up. And I'm doing white fabric and transparent because that's what I have the most of. And then I think I'll come back in and paint this. I'm going to get that all over my watercolor palette. What are you going to do? Cover it up. There. Isn't this fun? It's like playing in the mud. Move this up here so I can get this where I can work on it. Now all I'm going to do is wrap this 
and I tore it into one inch strips I'm going to cover this styrofoam base. Good night. Good night, nurse. What a mess. And this was a bad idea, these little strips. For one reason, I don't know why I cut them so thin, but you know what? There's no mistakes. There, there are no mistakes. There is no mistakes either, but depending on what kind of English you want to speak. This shirt has been hanging around my studio. It's a wipe-off shirt. And I saved the cuffs. Those may get used around the edge. But I switched to this because I have mas masking tape under there. And I don't know, I just kind of liked the, the look of it. So I'm going to use my clear Pauper Paul and I'm going to apply it to here. So I've already cut around my wire like that. And I'm hoping that I can cover the entire back of it. Okay, we're ready to assemble everything on this project. I have clear Pauverpol, and I have color art. Ah, yes, I do. Damn it, I hate it when that happens. Oh well. Okay, that'll be plenty. Dang me, dang me, they ought to take a rope and hang me up from the highest tree. Baby, won't you wait for me? Alright, enough silliness. I took a piece of, um, this is a shop towel, it's single ply, 100% cotton. And it doesn't have much texture, so what I'm going to do is what has been working for me lately is I'm going to paint this on her body. Now this is planned to go at her waist. All right? Yeah, that's right. So just wrap that around as good as you can. I could have done this part with the clear so I didn't use up my blue, but hindsight is always 2020. Keep it off her foot. Dang it, I just painted over her foot.
Oh, that's pitiful. Okie dokie, finished with that stage. I used a piece of this cleanup towel that I spilled all that stuff on. Made it kind of a tie-dyed top and then used coral colored crochet thread to kind of decorate it a little bit. Decorate her. Now what I want to do is finish her braid. So I'm going to go to the um, paper clay and make a braid and then I'll bronze it. I missed a spot right here. I'll have to bronze and uh, she's getting close to the finish line. Alright. Okay, I have three fairly thin loops of braid. I'm going to leave some at the top for attaching. So, over. All the crap on the desk won't matter. Because I'll do her bronze to match the rest of her hair. Very good. I'm separating these into separate little French braid type arms. Except that's not a French braid, but well, I guess it could be. This is as far as I'm going for this project for now. I want to resolve. Um, I want to do some stenciling in the turquoise proverb pole on the base. I want to, uh, I'll stiffen the ribbon with proverb pole. And I think I'm going to wrap it tightly all around that wire ring. I'd like to figure out a way to make her float straight up, but I haven't figured that out yet. So for now it's done and I hope you enjoyed her.